Hey everyone, welcome to Semester Review. In this segment, we're going to be reviewing the highlights of the 2018 first semester. The new gym and weight room are finally done after being under construction for quite a while. As well as the gym and the weight room, the new track, turf field, and locker rooms have also been completed, though they were uh, started and um, finished last year. One of the major changes in the gym was that there are now bleachers on both sides of the uh, court, which makes for a much more comfortable uh, meeting place for sports events and cons. The fall play, The Night of the Living Dead, was a great success, and we are looking forward to the spring one called The Fiddler on the Roof. As for sports, volleyball had a good season. Uh, they went 17-9. and nine. Football... Also a great season, went 9-3. and three. Uh, Cross country had a good season. They sent several people to state. And basketball so far is 13-2, and two, and they're looking very good this year. Wrestling recently won an out-of-town tournament, and it's looking pretty good this season. The Gonzaga Prep Food Drive brought in more than 100,000 pounds of food, averaging to about 110 pounds per student. This food was then donated to more than 200 families, and in the end, we still had some left over to donate to food banks such as Second Harvest Food Bank. Yes, as the winter production of Fiddler on the Roof has been working for months, memorizing lines and rehearsing choreography in preparation for opening night. I managed to get an interview with Ricky Brown, the actor for the lead character Tevye, and this is what he had to say. What are the people like within the show? People themselves are the characters. Mm, cast members. Cast members, yeah, I love them all. Um, everybody's unique, everybody has their own different style of acting, and um, they all have something to bring to the table. I really appreciate, you know, uh, people that have like different skills and uh, all sorts of stuff, like Caitlin Barr, cheerleader, and she's also good at acting. Uh, we're gonna look at another person, Tony Rupp. He's busy outside, and he also does acting too. Just all sorts of different characters. Who would you say is your favorite character from Fiddler on the Roof? Oh, I would definitely have to say, um, probably the butcher because um, his name is Laser Wolf. Uh, he he is the he deals with a lot in the play. Um, I tell him, Tevye tells him, that he can marry, he, he has permission to marry my eldest daughter, and turns out my daughter doesn't want to marry him, and him, at the, in the time, uh, has to deal with, like, the heartbreak of not being able to marry this girl that he likes, and uh, the way he goes through it and the way his character transforms, especially in the end of the play, is pretty good. What is your favorite part of performing? Uh, definitely the, the thrill that I get when I'm in front of a, a lot of people and, um, you know, uh, kind of the pressure. I like the pressure a lot. Um, the biggest pressure I've ever received because I have a ton of lines and a ton of blocking and I have a lot of the script, so um, I'm excited. And I'm on stage for a long time, too. What can audiences expect to see from this show? Um, wow, a lot of emotion. Uh, you, there's a lot of laughs in there. Uh, there's a lot of good music in there, there's a lot of downs, there's a lot of um, just all around crazy emotion that you experience. The Winter Musical opens on February 7th and will continue the 8th, 9th, and 10th, then resume on the 20th and 21st. For more information on the school theater program, cons contact Mr. Bulger. Ticket prices are $10 and performance times are at 7 p.m. except for the 10th, which is at 3 p.m. Um, my favorite thing about teaching is um, I love working with people, so I think it's fun to get to hang out with students all day, and it's fun getting to see them learn, and when they finally figure something out. It's... I really like pizza and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, no, I actually
actually went to school to be a health and PE teacher, but I really wanted to be a math teacher too. So working at Prep has actually given me the opportunity to get my math certification. So I'm kind of excited about being able to do both. My dream car. Probably some sort of like I don't know, I really like old classic cars. I don't know what it would be specifically, but uh, my family grew up with old Studebakers. Mm. So I'd probably want to have some sort of like 60s Studebaker or something. All right. Um, well, I hope to not give too much, but usually make all my homework through Friday so that they have a little bit of flexibility when they do it, but usually there's an assignment couple times a week. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm a big fan of The Office. Same. Um, trying to get kids to not play games on their iPads during class, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a big fan of like running and being outside and I like to hike uh, and I like to cook and bake and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, probably go to Italy. I've had a lot of friends that have gone to like Florence and Venice and stuff like that and I'll get some really good pizza because I've heard good things. Um, I would tell kids to not stress too much about the final because I feel like students spend a lot of time stressing about the final and about tests and stuff like that when they could just be studying for the tests. And it saves a lot of time and mm -hmm. energy. Hello, my name's Anna Schreckengoss and welcome back to Prep Peeves. And this is a show about stuff I hate. Let's get started. Finals after Christmas. No drinks or food in the school. After school jugs for being one minute late. Cons. When people stop and talk in the middle of the parking lot. Oh, hi, Tom. Oh, hey, Susie. They can wait. Let me tell you about everything I did last week. Thank you for watching Prep Peeves. My name is Anna Schreckengoss, and if you have anything that ticks you off, please email me at anna.schrecken at gprep.com. Thanks. See you next time. DI is a complicated club. The best way I can explain it is that it is a creative problem solving club organization. We do a lot of building, we do a lot of acting, we do some improvisation. Every year it's different. Eventually what you're trying to get to is you're making an eight minute skit where it accomplishes some type of challenge. We build a lot of things to accomplish that skit. We have to make our own sets, we make our own props and costumes and things like that. So um, essentially it's a skit but there's a lot behind that skit. You start at regional competitions and you just present your uh, skit to a group of appraisers. You show what you've been working so hard on. Then if you get first in that, you go to state. And if you get first there, then you go on to globals. And that is a huge, huge honor, wonderful thing. You compete against people from other countries. It's a really cool place to be. Uh, all of our funding is either self-raised, so if we do get farther in competitions. Um, we do things like the Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, we do also have um, really 
helpful donors that donate thousands of dollars to us to help us do what we do. But all of it's self-raised. At the beginning of the year, we have around like October, we always go into the uh, club fair that happens at the beginning of the year and you just show up to the informational meetings. Um, we have try it outs and you'll do a little bit of a mini challenge, but most of the time everyone who comes and stays and commits will get into the club. There is the official Destination Imagination website. Um, it is a huge organization. There's lots of information there. You can also just come ask a DI member. Um, we love talking about it. Ask any of us. We'd love to tell you what's going on. I hope that people can find out more about DI and um, how much it means to us because it is really a big deal to us, but it doesn't always get out there because it's really hard to explain. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Let's go to the movies and eat weights and see. So, Sydney, why did you decide to start Film Club? Because I'm really serious about film. Anyone who, who knows me close will tell you that and they'll affirm it. I've uh, wanted to be a director for eight years now and. Uh, uh, the majority of the stuff I do in my free time relates to film, and I realized that the the school d didn't have a film club, and it was a, I realized that last year when I was a junior, and I thought maybe I should start this club. So I learned from the club moderator, uh, Mr. Andrews, who helped me make the club. I learned from him that people had tried to make a film club before but uh, they weren't able to get it off the ground, but I wanted to make sure that mine succeeded. It's not currently at a stage I want it. <clears throat> and uh, I just had a meeting uh, yesterday, in fact, with... Yesterday would be Wednesday. I don't know when this is going up. So yesterday, Wednesday, I just had a meeting yesterday to establish a new schedule because... Uh, it wasn't going as well as I wanted it to because of the time constraints and I feel like the time constraints are the main issue with Film Club because we don't have the time with one meeting a week to get everything done that we want to do. So I recently voted on a new schedule and now we're doing two meetings a week. Do you think Film Club will be around next year after you leave? I hope so, because even though this is a rocky start, uh, I, by the end of the year, I want it to be in a state where it's in an almost perfect state, and I can pass it along to the next person who's going to run it, who has to be, uh, who has to be an underclassman, and I want them to run it next year, because I'm not going to be here next year. So I do want it to continue, but I want it to be in a state by the end of this year where it's worthwhile to continue next year. How can we get to Film Club? I forget the school G group number. It's not a group, it's a class, but there's posters around the hall that have the school G number, and it has the number on there. So you can get on the school G group by that way. And as for your other question, our next meeting is actually going to be uh, first week of next semester, because next week is finals week, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that is going to be the first week we try out this new schedule in which we're doing two days. So we would, our next meeting is in two weeks and it's on Tuesday, uh, it's on Tuesday during lunch and the meeting after that is Wednesday during community period. And where is that? It's in uh, here, it's it, either in the symposium or it's in uh, room 55 right next door. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. Alright, stop it.
shelf. We owned um, Two Women Vintage Goods, and it's uh, partially antiques, vintage, and newer gift items that are in Vintage Spa inspired. We're located at 2012 East Sprig Avenue, and inside our store, we have a um, espresso shop called Cream and Sugar, and um, we've always wanted to have espresso, and making this move from our other store, we were able to do that because we have a lot more room, and I think we, in this area, we're probably the only coffee shop, so which makes it nice. And we wanted to be able to offer coffee and baked goods, and eventually we may do sandwiches, um, so people can kind of uh, shop and um, have coffee, and we have chairs and tables where you can kind of sit and relax. Hey guys, welcome back to Owen's Move Reviews. Today we're reviewing Aquaman, the DC movie that was directed by James Wan, who also directed The Conjuring 1 and 2. All time, probably favorite scary movies, but we'll get into that later. Just kidding. No, we won't. But anyway, the cast is uh, comprised of Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones, for all you Game of Thrones fans out there, Patrick Wilson from The Conjuring, so he and James Wan are working together again, and then Amber Heard who started in some other stuff. I don't know what she started, but I'm sure she was good in it. Overall, the movie was so good. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it right now. It's so good, worth the price of admissions. Just saying, the visuals were incredible, incredible. Um, the script was a little underdeveloped, like they could have worked a little more on it, but it was, it was passable, the script was passable. I, I've definitely watched it again. I've probably seen it two times by now. So good. I would recommend to see it in 3D. If you've already seen it in 2D, go watch it again in 3D. If you've already seen it in 3D, go watch it again in 3D. If you haven't seen it at all, go watch it in 3D. It is incredible. It's a great blend of comedy and action and romance. It's amazing in every way. I swear, you guys will love it. It's amazing. The villain, played by Patrick Wilson, it... He is Aquaman's brother, and they actually have, like, some good fight scenes, and he has a good reason for his evil plan. It's, guys, I don't know what else to say. It's amazing. The chemistry between Aquaman, Jason Momoa, and Mira, Amber Heard, it's just amazing. So, like I said, if you haven't seen it, definitely go see it. If you have seen it, go see it again. Go see it in 3D, because this movie is amazing. I would give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Definitely go see it. I recommend 100%.